Doors can be a frightening thing. We don't always know what lies beyond them. Instead, what we want to show you is something exciting. Come on in and take a look. Beyond these doors of Calvary Lutheran Church are people who are inspired to meet and include you. People just like you. Ordinary men, women, teens and children who have come to trust their Savior Jesus Christ and His forgiveness. It has put a smile on their faces and joy in their hearts. God's love draws them into a living, active worship life where they find comfort, compassion, and strength in the preaching of God's word of salvation. Fellowship with Christ that begins in the water of baptism. And encouragement in the vitality of faith that is strengthened by receiving the body and blood of their Savior in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Many also find a deepening and strengthening of their knowledge of God and scriptures as they join a Bible study on Sundays or during the week. These special gatherings become the fuel that powers the engine of God's people for a new and holy life, a life of praise and prayer, of love and service, of making a difference in this sin-torn world of ours. Do you ever think of your role in the world? You probably wouldn't had you not have met Jesus Christ. But we have, and now an indelible image remains fixed in our minds, the scene that took place after Jesus died for our sins and was raised from the dead. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Those words light a fire in our hearts to help those who are without hope, to impress us with his passion for the lost and with his eternal plan to use us to carry out the heavenly work of saving souls. While called workers, like pastors or teachers, are specifically part of God's plan for spreading the good news, every person has a share in this vital work. That vital work is taking the gift of faith that God has given you and putting it into practice. Let's look at some of the opportunities that are available for you. Our multifaceted ministry is focused on making more disciples of Jesus Christ in our homes, in our church, and in our school. Let's take a look at the very visible ministry we carry out at Calvary Lutheran School. Give me something that he created on the fourth day. The sun, moon, and stars. Yeah, fourth day, sun, moon, and stars. What is the name of uh, one of the other two creeds that we have? Athanasian's Creed. What's the other one? Nicene Creed. Calvary School exists to serve the children ages three through eighth grade with a solid foundation of knowledge and understanding, beginning with faith in Jesus Christ. After all, as the Lord reminds us, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We call teachers who are trained to impress that knowledge on the hearts and minds of our children. We seek to offer a balance of academic, technological, physical, musical, and spiritual training, all in a setting of love and acceptance. We believe in the old adage, as the twig is bent, so grows the tree. The work we do to deepen a child's knowledge and understanding of his Savior's love will result in long-term blessings for both the student and for the kingdom of God. We also support ongoing Christian education of young people through high school and beyond. As members of the Kettle Moraine Lutheran High School Association and Wisconsin Lutheran High School Federation, we actively support their work, encourage our young people to attend and provide for them financially. 
Our work with Sharing Christ's Good News goes far beyond our own walls. We have joined together with over 380,000 Bible-believing Christians as members of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, usually called the Wells for short. The Wells is involved through world missions in bringing Christ to 23 foreign countries. Through multi-language publications with the printed message in 40 languages. And we're growing into new neighborhoods around the United States through home missions. We are touching lives in countless ways with the message of Jesus Christ. Through worker training of preachers and teachers at our two preparatory high schools, Luther Prep in Watertown, Wisconsin, and Michigan Lutheran Seminary in Saginaw, Michigan. Here, high schoolers are encouraged to consider full-time work in the gospel ministry. Graduates from these schools continue their ministry training as both future pastors and teachers at Martin Luther College in New Elm, Minnesota. Those preparing for the pastoral ministry complete their postgraduate studies at Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary in Mequon, Wisconsin. The Wells also provides what we need for worship and education through Northwestern Publishing House, providing aids such as catechism, hymnals, books, and devotional materials. Being part of the Wells helps us carry out Christ's saving mission in countless ways we would not be able to accomplish by ourselves. That's why we're glad to be able to support our synod financially with our congregational mission offerings. But you may notice that most of the work we do out of love for our Savior, in support of his mission, are the little things that many people never see. Like Bob and Dolores, who faithfully changed the message on our church sign even in bitter cold weather and cut the lawn in the summer. Or like Jim, who uses his own truck to plow the parking lot. Or like the money counters, who gather faithfully each week to make sure we account for every penny that is donated for this gospel ministry. Or like John, who uses his accounting skills to serve as our treasurer. Or like Fred, who ushers at church services. Or like Hetty and Carol, who serve on the altar guild. Or like Darlene, who has taught in our Sunday school for years. Or like Lois, who goes to visit members who are shut in by age or illness. Or like Dan, who keeps the church sanctuary clean and ready for worship services. Or like Patty, who organizes our new member dinners. Or like Dave, who uses his retirement to oversee the property management of our church and school. Or like Megan, who helps watch children while their parents attend Bible study. Or like dozens of others who volunteer to serve our Savior in so many ways. It's people who make up the Church of Jesus Christ. It's people responding to his call of follow me that do the work of his saving ministry. It's people just like you. Calvary has adopted the phrase, my part of the wall, to encourage people to consider the role they play in the church's ministry. Much like all the people of Israel were involved in building up the wall around Jerusalem in the time of Nehemiah, so all the members of our congregation have a role to play as they utilize their considerable talents in the service of saving souls. You have a valuable role in this ministry of saving souls. If you don't know what your part of the wall is, We'll be happy to work with you to find out. Take a look at our talent survey provided to get some ideas. Among the many talents available to us, one has been given to us all, the gift of giving. We're talking here specifically about financial giving. We ask with the psalmist, how can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? For that reason, we call our gifts offerings they're not dues or membership fees. They are willing responses of love for the Savior, who first loved us and then gave his life to redeem us from sin and death. Now, the Bible describes us as stewards or responsible managers of the wealth that he has put into our hands. We are reminded of four principles of God-pleasing financial stewardship when it comes to our church offerings. First, it all belongs to God. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, says Psalm 24. We don't really own anything. 
We just receive it as a gift from our generous God who directs us to share it generously with others. Second, attitude is everything. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God is pleased when giving puts a smile on our face. Reluctant or forced charity is not a part of his vision for his redeemed people. Third, it pleases God to plan our giving regularly and in proportion to the income we've been given. St. Paul advises, on the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income. Fourth, we give, trusting that God will gladly and easily meet all our needs of body and soul. Don't worry that somehow you're gonna outgive God, far from it. He reminds us, God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. He invites us to trust Him just as much for our physical needs as we do for our eternal life. And as we trust Him, more and more people will come to hear about His amazing grace. So, what about you? Do you see yourself on the other side of these doors? Our Lord Jesus passionately loves you and with equal passion wants to use you for his work in saving souls. Your faith in Christ, your God-given time and talents, your relationships with others, the wealth he entrusts to you, they're all part of his plan. Dedicate yourself to the task of owning more clearly than ever your part of the wall, the wall of salvation in Jesus Christ.